Hello again, everybody! This is Dr. Kendo, and I'm here with another Scribble Knots Unlimited object editor commentary, and this is where we're gonna create, of course, something from Dragon Ball Super, as you guys can see in the title. I'm gonna be making Hit, and uh, here you can actually see the remake of Goku that I did, and we're gonna just go transition right into the creation so that we can kind of hurry this along here, and uh, we're gonna start off with a mecha as the source object for Hit. And so, of course, that's Hit from Team Universe 6 in Dragon Ball Super, and so let's, uh, first I guess after removing the head, the arms, and uh, the at least bottom feet or whatever for the mecha, we're going to type in bear. If you go with the back leg, so the one that's behind, but it's his hind legs, uh, so then there's like that upper kind of thigh piece or whatever. That's what we used as these pecs right there. So it's right on the chest of this mecha character right here we can use for hit and the pecs. Hemisphere down there at the bottom, that'll be the start of kind of his lower midsection right there. And uh, radiation, there's several synonyms for this in this game, but radiation is what we're gonna use. You know, Hit looks like he's got an 8-pack, basically. He's got a crazy chiseled chest like that. Hexagon is gonna go below all of those radiations, but we'll do about 3 or 4 right there, basically to be where his abs are and stuff, just below his chest. And uh, Diaculon, uh, Diaculon right here, we have used this like once or twice, but it's not a super common stamp for me to use. I did attach it to the body piece, so that's definitely something to keep in mind. That is going to act kind of as as his coat, you know, the, the long coat pieces that are going over his legs and whatnot, but we don't want them to be attached to the legs. So also notice on that point, the front leg of the mecha, you know, it's to our left, of course it's the mecha's right leg, that and the lower foot part are both we layered behind the body. So that is an important step that you need to do to make this appear correctly if you want to go by my design. So there on the 12th page of the color pattern library, after we typed in this sock and the businessman and took the back arms of that, all of that stuff is going to be for the bottom half of the legs and whatever. So the mecha, we could actually keep those kind of legs that the mecha has because we're not going to see a lot of them. Uh, glue we can actually put right here. The businessman, if you notice, it kind of had three different color parts to it or parts that we could color, I guess I should say, of it. And so that's why actually the businessman, back arms, we use those kind of as legs because there is like uh, straps for the little knee pads, I guess, that Hit is wearing. And the businessman arm gives us that. You know, we could actually color that in purple. So that's pretty epic. We got an octopus tentacle piece that's kind of like bent just at the very end of it, but it's mostly straight. That's for the other side. So again, attach that one to the body and that's going to make it look like the coat is sort of wrapping around its whole body like that. Glum we just typed in after using a shoulder bone. The shoulder bone goes where the shoulders are. So that's like for the shoulder pads right there. Radiation to be the rest of, basically where his bicep is, you know, the rest of the arm there. And uh, Glum we could actually use as several different pieces to be for the, the remainder of his arms, you know, where the forearms are and his, his hands and stuff like that. So it's kind of an interesting use of one of Maxwell's brothers because the shoulder of Maxwell's brother is actually like an elbow pad, I guess, for Hit right there. And troglodyte back arm for the neck of Hit here, and we named it. So we're in the properties editor at this point. This is where you can edit the health of your character and all sorts of other kind of behind-the-scenes things for the object that you've created in Scribble Nuts. I like to read background information and fun facts if nobody's ever seen this series yet, and you're coming to me new. Uh, so this is just kind of where we'll talk about, of course, Hit, who is the stoic composed purple member of Team Universe 6 in Dragon Ball Super. Physically, he's tall with purple skin, wearing a big coat of many colors, uh, has red eyes and flattened out ears. Personality-wise, Hit is seemingly indifferent to a lot of the events that transpire in the show, often appearing to not have strong emotions and usually showing that he's an expert in his craft and with his abilities. I didn't even know this, but apparently he was born over one thousand years ago. Although maybe the fact that I don't know all this stuff is because I actually haven't seen Dragon Ball anything since the old days of DBZ back in the very late 90s for me. Over the course of, I'd say about a year or two ago as we created Boo, the Goku remake, Frieza forms, and all of the various Dragon Ball related creations, I did actually get a chance to catch up on some of the series from where I had left off back in middle school, which would have been the Android Saga um, just as it ended. So I got to see basically the Cell Saga and watching Dragon Ball Z Kai back when I was doing those creations. But I turn the question to you guys as we transition out of the properties editor coming up here. Uh, so what was the series or saga for Dragon Ball that you enjoyed the most? Leave it in the comments with whatever else that you want to say about this video and we can move on after I just show you that the scripting here basically because Hit can kind of manipulate time or I guess he, he does a kind of like a time skip. I suppose we should just call it what it is which is the time skip. The time skip move. So notice that the script said uh, basically 
Basically, when this object loses or gains health, then it will add an adjective to the trigger target. So that means that whatever it's targeting to attack is um, the trigger target, means the other character. It will add an adjective to that trigger target, which is non-moving, then wait a set time, about 60 frames or more if you want to, to where then it will remove the adjective, non-moving. So that's what you need to set the script for if you want to kind of get a, uh, I mean, it's, it's going to be like a Scribblenauts version, of course, of the time skip. It's not going to look exactly like it did in Dragon Ball Super or anything like that, but a good Scribblenauts representation. So let's start off with a head as the source object, of course, for the head now for hit. If you are not familiar with Scribblenauts Unlimited, this game does have a stamp limit, and a stamp is basically anything we're placing down. Like right now, we're going to put a golden egg over that head. So that's one stamp right there. You are limited in how many you can place on per object. So what that means is, of course, you saw me create the body earlier without a head. So we need to create the head separately and we can attach them later on. Let's go with a mola, of course, like a sunfish, and we can take the body piece of the mola, make that be basically where his chin is going to be and the, I guess, all around his mouth and a little bit uh, more like the nose and stuff. So um, we're getting that positioned where we want it to be right now. That looks okay. It is all right if they're kind of askew and off from each other a little bit. Completely fine. So then after that, we're going to go ahead and uh, get a new stamp. Let's go with the mutant and take the back arm of the mutant right here. And this is actually going to be for the brow kind of. It's not necessarily that Hit has like these big eyebrows, but you can see on a lot of the Dragon Ball characters in general when they're squinting or when they are kind of frustrated or scared or whatever the uh, expression is going to be, you can tell where their eyebrows are bending and everything like that. And so kind of just as a big brow line, we'll use those two mutant back arms. Trapezium right there is the shape that we've grabbed to um, to color it all white. We'll make that be his eyes right here for hit, and so now we're just going to kind of move everything and adjust it now because the more stamps that we keep putting on, the more things you would have to move if you think that it's not in the right place. So, for instance, if we put on all of the pieces of the eye that we needed just straight off the bat right away, then, you know, again, if it's not positioned where we want it to be overall once the, ob once the object is finished, then you would have to move everything. So rather than doing that process, let's just move kind of these few stamps before we get too deep into that. And so a jellyfish upper tentacle piece is going to go in between these two nursery fish fins. So take the side fin of the nursery fish kind of near its head and a half rest right there. And so the half rest combined with that jellyfish line tentacle piece right there, it's the upper tentacle of the jellyfish kind of near its body and stuff. That makes this mouth kind of uh, with that half frowny, you know, upside down smirk kind of look. And so then we went with a vegetarian. You can take the female or male probably and it'll work mostly the same. The back arm of the vegetarian. That's going to be for his flattened out ears like that on both sides. So uh, now I'm typing in a whale fish. Notice it was slightly hard to grab sometimes. Occasionally I'll find myself grabbing the uh, body instead when I really want that top fin of the whale fish in the back there. And so to get that fin, it's really good to kind of hit the point with your either mouse or stylus. Probably the people on PC are not going to have as much trouble grabbing the specific piece that they need, but on Wii U I know that sometimes the stylus, it'll hit the wrong object that we need. Pimple we actually use for the pupil of this creation and so the pupils are in there with that whale fish being the red part of his eyes. So now in the scripting or in the properties editor right here, you want to go down to the equipment tab for any time you create a head and a body separately. Make sure to check off that circle kind of near the bottom that says can be worn on the face like glasses. Fill that in and that looks good so we'll go ahead and save that and uh, get him onto the level right here. We're in the craters of Scribblenauts on limited, so let's put the head into the hands of our body object. Notice that it basically when we did that scripting with the head, you know, when we did that properties editor stuff earlier, it did mostly put the head where we want it to go and in the right spot. I'm just going to move it down slightly so you can turn on these green grids if you still need to adjust it, and uh, here we are editing the body object, of course. We moved the head grid, so you know, you can turn on those green grids, and uh, there's a grid basically for every moving part usually of your creations, or objects that you started off with, your source object in Scribble Nuts. And so, the moment we've all been waiting for, I would say, you know, you saw Goku at the beginning, my remake of Goku, and this is going to be sort of a, uh, I guess, a slight homage to the Dragon Ball Super moments, where Hit and Goku faced off. We don't have Goku's further forms or anything past this right now, but notice that that time skipping is actually working out uh, okay right here. I want to put Hit to the ground. There we go. So we've got both of our characters on the ground, and notice that Goku occasionally like that, after he does a punch like that, he seems like he's uh, staying still. And in Scribblenauts he is, but that's again to get that kind of look 
of a time skip ability. So I really like how that turned out, and that looked kind of hilarious, but uh, notice that Goku doesn't stay frozen for too long. I don't want him to be frozen all that long. I mean, isn't the time skip just like a short amount of time anyway? And so Hit taking advantage of that, it does look like he is going to beat our first form of Goku right here. This was our remake in Scribblenauts Unlimited that I did actually just about, uh, it was a little less than a year ago at the time of this recording, but yes, Hit has come out victorious. Look at that, Goku's head is on the ground like, you suck. But yes, we have hit right here, so notice the creation in full as it's done. I do like how this turned out. It's been really fun to create some of the Dragon Ball related, uh, I guess, universe in general. Basically, again, ever since I did like the Frieza forms, which we did in a past episode, and creating Boo, or I guess it was Super Boo, Goku, and all of that. So otherwise, remember to follow me over on twitch.tv slash drkendo, also on Twitter at dr underscore kendo, also got an Instagram, Amino, and everything in the world. Hashtag Kendo4Prez 2024. And as per usual, we'll create whatever is most popular, most requested each week based on your comments. So leave your suggestions in the comment section below. And I will catch you guys on the next vid. And thanks for viewing. Down the road of twists and turns, always anxious to see what's within. We can look ahead to the point of no return to the rest of our lives as a spectacle.